CES 2018 is done. It is in the books. It is kaput. And besides a little rain, a little flooding, and a little power outage, it appears that most of us in the tech media have gotten out with little to no scarring. So, to congratulate ourselves, we took to a room high up in the Mirage on the Las Vegas Strip and talked for about an hour on the biggest advancements that were brought out at the show. From an experimental laptop named Linda to fingerprints going where they have never gone before, it's episode 287 of the Pocket Now Weekly. Recorded Wednesday, January 10th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, this is the podcast that talks about the technology that makes us move. From smartphones to tablets to the latest attempt at wearables, it's the show that's trying to get into 2018 as if we were all kids in the candy shop. And we could pay for our sweets with a tap of Google Pay. I'm Jules Wong, news editor and producer of the weekly. Hello. We actually shared space and audio this week with Miriam Jawar and the Mobile Tech Podcast. So the next hour of conversation you'll be hearing comes from that session. And it's our thanks to her and her team for letting us share the fun with our listeners. With that out of the way, here's Miriam to start us off. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Joar, and today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2018, and we're at CES, and I'm surrounded by the most amazing bunch of folks. I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. This is going to be a raucous, crazy podcast, probably about an hour long, and we're going to talk about everything we liked and didn't like at CES. We've got some topics. Um... There's more going on still, but I think we can say that the CS is pretty much in the can for most of us. Mostly. I think that's fairly, yeah, that's mm-hmm. fair okay. to say. Okay, so... We've got a couple more important things. All right, yeah. so who wants to start? Nicole. Oh, yes. Nicole Scott <laughs> is here <laughs> of Mobile Geeks. Hi, Nicole. Hello. wasn't prepared to start, <laughs> that's but yeah. That's okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can go back to whatever you're doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <Jaime>. May. <laughs> I'm a Rivera, Pocket Now, so good to be here. Yeah, thanks for being on, Nick. Nick Gray, High Tech Traveler. Hey, Nick. Nick, I, all of you guys have me on my podcast, except for Jules. Well, yeah, I'm with Jaime, uh, Jules Wong, Pocket Now. But hey, you haven't been on, so it's your first I time. I mean, hello to the person that is listening to this. I sound horrible, but... You sound great. No, you, you sound great. Don't you sell yourself short. You'll you'll sure. Michael, you want to quickly introduce yes. yourself? Michael Fisher, a.k.a. Mr. Mobile, and I'm so happy to do the show live. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's great. Very so, um, you guys know the topics. I'm going to go one by one, and we're going to start talking about it. I get, first of all, okay, let's, let's talk about some ground thing, like ground rule type things. What was the thing, the theme for CS, in your opinion, so far? <sighs> Yeah. Someone asked me this the other day on the floor, and it was really hard to sum it up, because there's, there's rehashes, there's some new important stuff, there's a lot of stuff that's never going to make it to the market. It's like, what's the theme? Is it, it's just, it's CES again is yes. the theme, you know no, what I mean? No, I don't, I don't agree. You don't I think, agree? I don't, I think, I think that the theme was personal assistants are now in everything. Yes. Oh, fair. Have, the, the, have you seen the monorail? Yeah. yeah. Google, Google hey, is Google. Google. Oh, oh. Everyone used Sorry, to have everyone. an app, and now it's everyone has an AI assistant that's in our product right now, and you can go get it. True. Uh, to me, the theme was uh, uh, Google Assistant all the things. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah, Specifically and, Google Assistant. Yeah. And And... Alexa's going to show up in weirder places than she did before. Yeah. Well, and there, yeah. there was And try to sell you diapers and a couple yeah. of other things. 50 yeah. Street like, Subway Station. Or like get you pregnant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 50 Street Subway Station. Yeah. Jeez. I just finished uh, tagging everyone in this Instagram Oh, awesome. It's cool. Yeah, you guys can document away. So, um, so, okay, we've got an agreement that AI uh, and assistance are kind of a big thing, right? Yeah. Would yeah. you yeah. say that's yeah. pretty much it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Buzzwords. What is the thing that you felt stuck out and in either good or bad way that you felt was really like the thing of the show? Oh. From a phone perspective? Well, not just anything. Yeah. Because, I mean, CS, I can't just be mobile tech. I right. have to be pretty broad. But, yes, phones, of course. Yeah, but, see, I, I feel like every time I come away from CS, it's usually like, well, it's a mid-range phone show, and they had a couple things well, and whatever. Well, Sony and, certainly yeah. proved that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know if you wanted to jump to this yet, but, like, the thing that will absolutely touch every single phone that, that launches from, from here on out is that under-display fingerprint sensor that, yes. we, that oh, most yeah. of us have gotten a chance to play with from the Synaptics... What are they calling it? Clear touch, clear ID. Clear ID. Clear ID. And it's such a small thing. It's such it's a, small such a th- tiny little yeah. sensor. No, well, not, not even like like a 
parts wise, like that's great and too. But it's like it's such a tiny conceptual thing because we've been talking about this on the iPhone ten and you know it's, where been, it's heck, been nearly three years. Yeah, since touch ID, where the hell is it gonna be? With this. And with this, you know, this was the big thing that we missed out on the ten and no one has brought yet why in vivo uh, this is the company that is a uh, kind of related to oppo and kind of related yeah. to oneplus too yeah it's weird cuz like cuz vivo is is what is a top 5 smartphone manufacturer by, by volume right in, but they're top 5 Southeast or, Asia. In, Southeast in, Southeast in Asia. the world aren't they yeah. right well i, I yeah. think they can iterate quickly mm. as far as getting products out and I, when we were there i was talking to the pr lady and she was saying they've been working with vivo for a while to, like with prototyping for a device, so okay. that's why I think they Vivo was. But mm-hmm. I, as you said, it's not really a device; it's a component mm-hmm. that's going to be changing all of the devices in the coming year. Like, think, like, let's hope. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because it actually works really well. Like yeah. we all know the product demos that are kind of janky and like yeah. don't. Yeah. You know, it's like ah, oh, this uh, this will be this is pre-production. This will work better later. But this was great. You you pick up the phone. It projects that little fingerprint graphic on the display. You drop your thumb on it, and it takes what about half again as as long. So I still need to capacity. go to it. But was it was it a production phone? Yeah. Is this a yeah. real a, like? Yeah. It doesn't have a name, but it's a oh, production yeah. phone. Okay. But it's going to ship in what the second quarter? Pretty much. Yeah. Q yeah. two. Yeah. I think they're going to do the full announcement of the phone itself at MWC. And if you've uh, seen the One Plus Five T. You're looking at it. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's a little what bigger. What is it? It's <laughs> making all the phones yeah. the same. But the, yeah, the, the design is a little bit different, though. Like it, the back is has a different feel to it. So it's sure. not. It's yeah. not. But like yeah. the basic specs are going to be right. the same. Yeah, but like Vivo, Oppo, and OnePlus are all are all from the same factory. Same, same right? other yeah. company. So they, yeah, they right. basically have the same design set. Yeah. To, Just to work walk from. across the block and then sure. Yeah. No, they're, no, it's they're, the they're, same block. They're literally using oh, the same, 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 same factory. Yeah, yeah. literally. Okay. Um, yeah. But it's not the phone, right? That people. Are, I mean, the phone is this, because it's the first one we get to play with. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's why it's important at the moment. But I, I'm just so looking forward to seeing it, to seeing what phones are possible when a manufacturer doesn't have to say, add in a bigger bezel on the bottom for a thumbprint sensor on the front, or move it around back and sacrifice battery space or do whatever Samsung did is with this the aesthetics placement. game just bezel down bezel down bezel down at this point because yeah pretty I'm, much I'm, dude like, look at the iPhone 10 man yes. I mean what more example do you want yeah. that's the way things are going well, look at Xiaomi's Mi Mix phones it's I not, mean they're even less than the iPhone right I mean it's cool I mean you know you get it's more immersive and the user experience is you know exponentially better in my opinion but it's just that, that's where we're going in terms of just looks of smartphones and where else can we go? It's not just the looks, though. This is Where the thing, the usability thing. Has anyone ever been trying to train maybe a parent or a grandparent to use an iPhone or an Android phone? And the first thing they do is win that thumbprint. They like put they, it on the They put their thumb the right on the screen. I know. Yeah, where the thumbprint yeah. thing is. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's not how... It's, it's the sensor. But that now it will so be that. True. It that is so true. That is so true. Oh, my God. It's going to make it so... Like, just that little bit easier... Yeah. For I'm get... looking forward to seeing phones this year I, and I, I've talked about this on the podcast last year at the end like kind of like reminiscing 2017 is I really think we're going to see f- all the big players come out with a face ID competitor because we if anybody who's used it for any duration of time agrees at least I think it's it's it changes the game. Yeah. It, it's like continuous authentication. If you don't look at it, it stops authenticating. You can pass the phone to a friend. They're screwed. They can't see anything. I think to me Depends that's act, it's, actively, like it's actively authenticating. Well, yeah, yeah, there is that. But I mean, I, I'm trying to say that I think that I also want the fingerprint. I would yeah. like so both. So to yeah, me, exactly. I, I I'm expecting the, I prefer I'm the expecting like the S9, for example. It'd be amazing if they can do Face ID as good as Apple, yeah. as reliable, and it can be used for Google Pay. And it's not called Google Pay. Well, what, <laughs> Sam, what Samsung's going to do, they're going to do and a fingerprint, the fingerprint sensor. fingerprint on the screen. On the screen, they're going to do Retina. They're going to do Face ID. Yeah, they're going to throw everything out. And fi- like, I don't want them to do Retina. Four-factor yeah. authentication. Okay. And, gonna, <laughs> and you have to so authentication all it's four. It's going to be neighbor ID. ID like. It never worked Retina for most people. Mm-hmm. No, it didn't. Yeah. You, so, it so was so picky as to so the business. Oh, the iris scanner. Here's the thing. In the case of the iris scanner, I... I guess I was okay with the iris scanner until I started using Face ID. Now every time I pull out the Note 8 and I try to use the iris scanner, I'm so used to the concept of not having to align Alignment. my face yeah. in a specific way I know, to have like, it work. I mean, look, it's That's there. And, it's and, like, and I just don't deal with that done. anymore with the iPhone. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know? 
And so I guess I'm spoiled by the iPhone 10 nice. so much so that I don't know what the future of the iris scanner will be. Nicole's like, what the, the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> you know, yeah, what the hell are you guys talking about? With the stupid Note 8, I'm reading my notifications. I'm like, oh, the stupid thing opened again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> That's you a line you're on. You guys are like, oh, it's so annoying. And I'm like, it's so annoying that it's unlocking my phone. And it works. <laughs> oh, no. So not to rain on the parade of the synaptic sensor, but... I actually had a little bit of time, hard time actually using it because it is so small mm-hmm. and it, you don't have the physical alignment of a metal ring where you're putting your finger on yeah, the, on the back yeah. of the phone. Yeah. Yeah. No and you have to push a little yeah. bit harder but to get your finger to align with, or it's so the, it reads it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. to it against yeah. the glass because it's optical. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a 5.8 millimeter by 5.8 yeah. millimeter square and you're, they're using the OLED the, to, uh, light to refract uh, the image data from the print down to the sensor, so it's so. So I and asked. Fussy, but, right? So I asked the 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 rep there, and she said they can make the sensor larger so that you have a larger area, and you could technically put in multiples. So you could put uh, one at the bottom, you could put one in the middle. It's all up to the OEM how they want to implement it. Sure. If the OEM asks for a larger phone. sensor. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's what, that's what I was saying. I was like, uh, can't you just have one the whole bottom half of the phone? Well, diminishing right. you touch anywhere there. Yeah, but then... But wouldn't you, that cost a lot? Money, yeah. money, exactly. <laughs> and what's crazy is you can actually see it. Hi, man, I were talking about it right yeah. before the podcast. Like, if you angle the phone just right, yeah. the you macro, can see you can the see sensor it. sitting mm-hmm. under the under the OLED. Oh, yeah. But when you Amazing. fire up the display and get it's a macro gone. lens, macro yeah. shot right on it, you, you can't, can't see, see it. A only thing. when the display yeah. is People off. People have it's been incredible. suggesting cameras, like the selfie camera should be under there, or like oh, any yeah. other sensor that you want under the display. And well, if, if you think about it, it's an optical sensor. So, yeah. what what limits the selfie camera to fit there in the future? I mean, yeah. well, you just have well, to just can't be lit. <laughs> well, it has to peek between the. Pixels it has to peek between problem. the pixels, and then you have to pull out that data between. It's those amazing pixels. to me that you it's can do optical. It. Like you know, yeah. most of the the touch sensors we use, uh, fingerprint sensors are capacitive, yeah. right. high resolution capacitive. And to me, that they managed to make it work optically through a screen, and you, you the lens issue. Try how do you focus the light properly? Well, like, but, but, well, but, there's, but, there's no but, lens at all. It's no, I know. It's, that's it's, my it's point. Just the sensor it's just, itself. But that's the thing. Touch yeah. ID has always been optical. So. Yeah. yeah, Touch ID. Oh, Touch ID is Touch ID has always been yeah. optical. Oh. Everybody else the capacitive, but Touch ID has, yep. was always a camera. Well, much. in the Apple patent I saw mm-hmm. that it was like it, it was using the bouncing off method. It was using the pixels going back up and then bound, bouncing it down to the center again. So I mean. I don't know. You know, like, I, just, I just remember that I forgot to remove my fingerprint from the demo unit. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I'm um, fingerprint number five. Yeah. All right, so should we move on to another topic? Sure. So the Vivo thing is definitely the thing that we're most amazed with. I, I haven't it. seen it yet, but I'm pretty excited. Go look at it. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that stands out? Oh, my God, that razor... Project okay, let's talk about that next. I, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, like, so I had to like download old footage from Michael's previous reviews on the Pat phone. On yes, uh, with, yes. from we we've, we've, we've been covering so many. We've been covering this forever. Yeah. Uh-huh. We've been covering this forever. The whole concept of your smartphone being more powerful, and you know, I guess my biggest problem with things like Dex is how much it costs to get in. It's like, and then you need a monitor plus a mouse plus a keyboard, and your mobility just goes completely down the drain right there. Mm-hmm. I like the concept of the pad phone because it was still a mobile product. It was just a different form factor. But Android was just not ready. And so, I mean, when, when I saw Project Linda, I just walked in. I was like, is that a trackpad with speakers? And they're like, <laughs> no, it's the Razer phone. I'm like, you're kidding me. It, I thought it was genius. Just the placement of where it is and the whole concept. Well, I've always of, said that somebody needs to put replace the trackpad of a f- laptop with a phone. And I guess that's what they did. Yeah. Though. And I, the only thing that it's missing is for the phone to vibrate the moment you press things because it, you know, it, there's no haptic feedback. Oh, there's no haptic yeah, feedback. And so I, I found myself all the time just trying to press the damn screen. It, and it's why, do you think, it feels why don't they have that? They have a vibration it, well, it's, it's still they, a concept. It's, and I they guess said that at least six months before it, it hits the market. And, and it's so far off. But the problem is I would buy the product just as it is without whatever it is that they want to add. So they, want, they want it to be a touch screen. They want, uh, <clears throat> they want dual screen functionality. I don't care about those things. Right. I want that thing to be a laptop whenever I want it to be and for the phone to sit so there and that's it. That for, would be me. For the listeners who haven't seen it, and they might have seen it on various coverage that you guys did, but 
I, like what does it look like? Basically, it's basically the trackpad is replaced by it's the phone. It's a razor spell. And it still has. Is a, ra- oh, it's it's a, a razor spell. So it still has the keyboard and the display and everything. It's, it's the same the, Chroma keyboard. The same the chassis. Yeah. Oh yeah, all that stuff that's all everything. there. Everything. And does it have hardware acceleration for graphics no. then? No. Not yet. USB C no. Thunderbolt it's, it's three. Still pure all it has yeah. is well, and they gave you the information. I saw your video. They gave you information on storage. Yeah. They didn't give me anything. Yeah. It's got a storage in it. Like fifty six watt hour battery and then then two hundred gigs of additional storage. Oh nice. So you know, keep the phone going, and you know, I mean, I understand why the haptics, because the phone itself would be vibrating. Because if you take the phone out of it, it's just a pit, and you know, otherwise it'd be shaking in the pit. It'd be you know, vibrating pit, and it would like. Then there's a moving part too with the USB C. Can we call this podcast "Shaking in the Pit"? Yes, shaking in the pit. It's what we call it's razor moshing is what we're calling yeah, it. No, but there's also no, the, the... No, and no banging on the table, too. Exactly. Uh, USB, but that USB-C port, you know, you press the button and it, you know, inserts it in to the so, phone. And it's and got this, like, really cool drilling part. noise. Like, yeah. 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 So I was that little tiny that motor, yeah. I think that's yeah. so smart, because I don't think I necessarily would have thought of that, but... That you hit the button, the USB C port go the the port goes into the connector, and then you can turn the thing upside down, and the phone's going to stay in there. Yeah, yeah. and oh, yeah. it's it, the phone goes right to the edge, and there's a gap in the casing, so to sign in. You just drop your thumb on the fingerprint on the sensor because it sticks out the side. Yeah. It's so thoughtfully designed. <laughs> that I, is I, amazing. That, 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 I ripped it out. You ripped the phone out. <laughs> of Yeah, the, I was like, oh, oh, you just bought, and it was fine. Oh, right, so I, I was like, oh, la, 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 and then I was like, oh, this isn't working anymore, and then I realized that I actually, like, You just ripped, yanked the phone Yanked out. the phone right out. Ooh. Did you and break I, the connector? No. Wow. No, and okay. I didn't. I wow. didn't. I, afterwards, I was like, wiggling things around, and I'm like, no, everything's fine. That's <laughs> what my dad <laughs> said. It was like, you're <laughs> using my dad's here. This yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. we so, saw it, we, we were talking to the product engineer that they only brought a handful of yeah. them here that he had, like, personally put together. And he was saying the thing that he was most clear. worried about was not the press breaking them, but the other people Consumers. that are here at CES. But of course, Nicole would be the one that you <laughs> it out. Well, if the Razor PR folks are listening, I still need my review unit, number one. Same here. And number same, two, same here. Nicole broke the thing. Well, no, they didn't break it. They didn't break it. No, but listen, I, I feel, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping... You know, if if Huawei is going to do their thing with the Mate 10, so that you can use it as a, yep. as a computer. I mean, if Samsung is going to do it, I hope that Razer goes beyond just having this be a concept and price it aggressively. I mean, if they told me that the whole package of the Razer phone plus this thing would cost me a thousand bucks, I'd pay for it. Would you? I'd go for like, it. Rather than buying just like an eight hundred dollar like really good laptop yeah. that can do a lot it's of just, stuff. It's just well, think about it. I mean, but well, you whole, get your phone too. Think about it. So yeah. the the biggest problem with Chromebooks is just how bad they launch Android apps. It's yeah. I mean, it's this, I, I'm not I, talking about Chrome. You can get a PC for seven ninety nine. I get it for four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah. yeah, but you wouldn't want to. I wouldn't think. Well, it would uh, do maybe, more than the Razer phone exactly. would. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. here's the Pretty thing: is that, you know, we go back to Android, and you know how prepared it is for this kind of uh, you know. Well, and they, they actually had this. Yeah. It's not. It's still not. I yes. Think. Agreed. They, Fuchsia. They, they had a custom launcher. You know. To, well, that's fair, but I still say Fuchsia is the way to go here. If this, dude, if they're merging, dude, we, we don't even know what Fuchsia is, right? Yeah, yeah, so, no, wait, yeah. So that's we don't know. No, I've seen the a, armadillo. Out, out no, 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 but that's a really good point that was raised when I was in there. There was just a bunch of people bouncing around, talking questions, and stuff. It's like, wow, in, in two or three years, maybe when that confluence happens, this could be a really compelling mm-hmm. product. Until then, it's like it's a really well executed Atrix again. Yeah, and, 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 and that's the biggest happened. issue I have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the issue I have is Razer is new to the smartphone market. How many devices have they sold? Uh, and they're creating a device that only works for their unique phone. So I was talking to Sean last night about this. It's like you have maybe 50,000 phones sold. Your maximum market share or maximum sales for this product is maximum 50,000. If 100% of your Razer phone owners buy this, that's that's not a like it's an engineer's product. Good it's point. not it's not a company's marketing. Like this is how we're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Like I mean, someone came up with this idea and said we could do this, and it, yeah, it's great. But how are you going to sell it? Who are you going to sell it to? But yeah. Are we sure it's really going to come out in mass volume and not just like oh we got ten, like like what Asus did with the patent? But they put ten thousand units out and they're like real product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Asus has like markets of scale and they're like fifty thousand times bigger than Razer. No, 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 no. But like, like, le- like, but like legit, Asus just like made shit up. Yeah. 
like like remember the the e key but they make shit up all the time right. like they have money yeah. to burn too oh well, sure yeah. the razor has a track record of doing this at CES like CES right is the yes. show where they're like here's yeah. this crazy, crazy thing, thing. Yeah. Yeah. remember that <laughs> tiny little yeah. keyboard PDA thing yeah. they did like Oh no! no was I, it I, I remember the CS three, screen, years the three ago. screen laptop is the one. There was that, yeah, right. that, 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 that oh all the God. prototypes got stolen. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. kidding. Yeah. Right all after this, yes. the show, yeah, but you remember they did this, this tiny clamshell yeah. wow. PDA Windows machine a few years back with the like laser build? the yeah. keys had like LED, OLED screens in them. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes. Like all the all the keys were OLED screens. And you could reprogram for the next black. Very, you can was, reprogram <laughs> it all. Yeah. Oh, that's well, great. But that has that makes sense in gaming world because you can control whatever yeah. the heck you want. I don't see uh, as it is with Android and with that kind of screen. I don't see it. I don't see yeah. where the the target is. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Their like, target. This is a concept prototype thing. Will it actually be a product that yeah. that will well, actually hit the market? Besides factors, maybe a limited release. Sadly, of Razor's, something. Razor's track record is zero possibilities. Right. Every single concept that they've brought yeah. to CES has never made never it. Never shipped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's but, just it's just a showcase to get, get to, to get us to show up at their booth, and it works every <laughs> and it, year. It works every year. <laughs> every year. Like, really cool. I will not be tricked next year. <laughs> Our ad revenue is going to be way up. <laughs> Thank you, Razor, for helping us sustain the publication. I, ha- I have to admit, it was my favorite thing of the show. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. I Believe like it or that. not. I mean, I, I like the idea. I feel that like with Android, we're not even close to the implementation. Yeah, I get that. it. It's just I would never be caught dead using Dex. It well, just yeah. won't happen. Mm-hmm. To you me, know. honestly, the simplest solution is what Huawei is doing with the Honor, the Mate 10 Pro. Agreed. We just plug it into an MHL or or d- display well, and there was, the cable there on the dock, right? Yeah, but you don't need the dock for Dex. Like no. the dock mm-hmm. is an option. Like you the can dock, plug a Samsung well, phone by, or a TV, right? By yeah. default, you can't. You have to like hack something to make it work. Yeah. No, no, yeah. 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 they changed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that because I was embarrassed myself. They're like, oh yeah, check this out. Everyone, all Android Central guys, come in here. Let's check this out. Oh man, my keyboard search history. Is weird. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah, that reminds me of my iPhone 4S after the Buzz video, yeah. which, which, which was mocked publicly for many reasons. <laughs> Just to make you feel better, my friend. Thanks, you know, man. You know. Yeah. But anyway, so. There's so, that. I'm thinking, what else stood out? Let's see, I've got the a bunch of. TV. To yeah, me, yeah, do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah, let's I do it. I loved it. Like, honestly, I, I stopped caring about making YouTube videos after I did that one. I was like, I just don't care about any other products anymore. Really? It looks I don't incredible. Think, I actually don't think I've posted a single... I, maybe after after CES, I'll get back to it. But I'm just like, <laughs> I'm done. This is like half it. a million views. That's cool. I'm so, That's enough. It broke <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's, because it's it doesn't look like it should be able to bend. And it looks like a real TV. And then when it rolls up, you're like, my God, it's magic. Yeah, it's I, magic paper. Oh, I didn't God. see it. So for those who haven't Yeah, so yeah, it's, like, it's it. like basically, it, it's a 65-inch glorious television. <laughs> and if you can see Nicole, she has her hand in the air right now. Shaking. <laughs> Shaking. Vigorous. But, and, and then like, it has t- a tiny maybe like one centimeter slats on the back. Where you can just see them kind of like fold around, okay. right? In most demos, they don't let you. They, they didn't let me take off the box, but you can see it like rolling down. Actually, I think Fox News got it so Ar- around a roll. Around that's roll. the yeah, rigid roll. component that keeps it like well, yeah, so that keeps it that keeps it fair and balanced. Yeah, so it, it just nice. rolls. It just rolls away. And the, they, the plastic front, so it's they're like we can't tell you what it is, and it's obviously plastic because it, it's bending, yeah. yeah, right. But like when it comes back up and you're looking at it, it doesn't look like it should be able to curve. That's so cool. yeah, from it, the it looks, edges, yeah, it it looks like it's actually tiny little slats, like yeah. and then when bars. it rolls yeah, around, it kind of goes in around a, probably a pretty big spool, yeah. yeah, but it's very controlled the motion and the bending and. And, yeah. But it, when this it's flat, it's flat. There's no waves. There's nothing. It's perfect. And the, perfect. the idea yeah. is that like it can, adjusts for different aspect you, ratios. You can roll away the bars, yeah. And okay. then and like and then I, I I know like in Asia, most most people I know don't have TVs because they're like ugly, right? Uh, if your apartment is so small, 
You don't right? want a TV that, on the like, wall. And, and if you if you have a big TV, it, it's going to be the focal point of your living, and maybe that's not sure. what you want as part yeah. of your lifestyle. That's unhealthy. It's unhealthy to yeah. have like such a big. But you like having oh, the big TV. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, right. So, oh, so you're talking about like like putting it away when putting you're not it watching. Away. Oh, yeah. So it goes yeah. like it's it's a piece of furniture. Right. So it rolls down into a piece of furniture. It's like Sony's like short throw 4K projection. Yeah. Projectors. Yeah, it's a piece, device, it's a piece yeah. of furniture. It, you know, you have it up yeah. against the wall, and then it projects eighty inches onto the wall, and it's right on the wall. Smart homes, more furniture. Yeah, I, I now have a uh, projector in my place in Portland, and I have a hundred and five inch image. It's fantastic, yes. uh, and I can put it away. Like yeah. it just disappears. I, I, I still you use know? the ZTS Pro Two. It, yeah. it's so Classic. practical. It's perfect yeah. for karaoke. Yeah. Yeah. Karaoke. I still hate the the Velcro sounds that you included in the unboxing video, though. You you oh, you unwrap the wires, and oh. then you. I thought, I thought you were afraid of the knife that I used to unwind. Well, <laughs> I know you can handle knives. Have you guys tried that that Anchor Nebula? The no, what is, what that? is that? So even? it's a. It wasn't even U.S. I thought I thought the U.S. only got it. Is it really, yeah, it's, a, it's it's a projector made by Anchor. Huh. And it, and it's like a little little bucket. It's. I gave up my apartment and all of my worldly possessions, and it's one of the few things I own. So, <laughs> I'm like, this is so important. The UI sucks, <laughs> but they're gonna update it one day. <laughs> Since we're on TVs and projectors, did anyone see the little robot at Pepcom that had Android TV projector that was just, yes, like, spinning I saw around? that. No, it like, was it's, it's a little round, old, like egg-shaped robot that has a projector built in that's Android TV and it follows you around the house projecting TV on the wall oh man you can't even get away from <laughs> no you can't it <laughs> follows you it's like no and no so, you're gonna watch this commercial break <laughs> so for the demo here they actually had two of them like side by side and they were like competing to where they were projecting the really the Android TV oh, yeah. no. I'm like what the heck is going on here yeah, yeah there have been a lot of goofy little robots yeah. the, this oh, show the what Sony it? one Oh, the yeah. The eyeball. The eyeball's eyeball. back. Yay. Yay. We, scratch, we scratch behind his ear and he's like, oh, it's so cute. There's one. I'm sorry I don't know the actual... How, how much like do, the, things, do things like that cost in Japan? The, the eyeball? Yeah. The eyeball used know. to be like $1,500. It was like, expensive. Yeah, 15 expensive. years ago. Yeah. yeah. But there was that thing, that really heartwarming thing at um, one, of the, one of the shows within the show where it's like, it was the Aflac Duck. Yes. Oh, yes. I saw that. Yeah. 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 It was kind of creepy, though. Yeah. 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 I didn't go over there because I was like, that table is creepy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's a yeah. skin yeah. one, right? Yeah. See, I know what the deal was yeah. before I went over there. It's oh. apparently like it's, it's intended for kids who are, you know, have like serious, serious health problems and like need to do injections and stuff. And you can do like injections what, it on the... injects them after no, they look you, at it No, like, they can cute? inject the, the Aflac duck or whatever like that, and what? it's, like, it, and it's it's meant to, like, de-scarify oh, the whole okay. thing. Oh, and then, like, Empathetic it, kind of thing. Yeah, though. right, so that, that, you know, they can just kind of ease into it and get more comfortable with it. That, at least that's what, that's what David Kogan told me, and I was like, oh, I didn't... I didn't expect to have to like bring my heart to CES. So this is <laughs> David Cogan could sell you like coal. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, he'd be like, "Yes, this oh, is totally. this is this is the thing that good kids get for Christmas." <laughs> yeah. Fellow uh, fellow co-founder of MalbecFanboys.net. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not time for plugs yet. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Where the hell were we talking about? Wait a second, Malbec. The Aflac dot. The Aflac dot. Yeah. Before I that, I know you like good Rolling. Started, no, I don't know. What was the Rolling TV Malbec. that started? Juan Back no, it was Ibo that started it. Ibo, Ibo started it, that's true. So, um, can, can, did anybody see any drone stuff, can I ask? Oh, oh yeah. If, is that cool? Cause, like, drones? Yeah. They're not, yeah. they're mobile devices. They are. They are By mobile. themselves, you I can't see. control them. Yeah. Yeah. They hail death from above. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fisher loses his, though. So. A, no, they run away. <laughs> but wait, wait, you lost one? Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. My very second flight, I think. I, 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 I went like, stalking Where around Arlington to find that. I said, come home and then it thought about it and then it went that way <laughs> it was like you were not forever like on the ocean uh, I have no idea I looked for it for three hours with justice it's, it's like you are not my owner yeah. but I have a new one and it's lovely but uh, I didn't see a particular drone that I liked at this show but I saw right across the hall from where all the drones are being demoed in their cages and flying they have this like super military looking booth 
with these dudes in like oh, yeah. uh, combat fatigues mm -hmm. and this very intimidating looking piece of equipment that looks like it's from the top of a tank. We'll shoot down mm -hmm. your drone. We'll we'll, that like, for eight the, hours. Line, the biggest tagline on the drone is what? We'll bring them down. We'll bring them down. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, and so I've seen a lot of devices like that, like drone security. Like, yeah, have you? I, that's yeah, my first and thing. they've been out for a while, and but they are illegal. What? That's They're really? illegal really? because mm -hmm. drones are governed by the FAA. Yeah. Yes. It's a terrorist attack if you take a drone out of the sky. Really? Yeah. Whoa. So all of these products, like in the United States, the US, they are yeah. illegal. Well, you it cannot depends. use well, these. Does yeah. it even depend on private property, though? No, no it doesn't cause because it's regulated the, the, by the FAA, FAA owns the sky. Yeah. This is you why whenever a town sky. tries to pass an ordinance like governing drone law, yeah. drone flies over beaches, the FAA is like, no. no. Or, uh, the no, courts are like, they, they, can't. they can't. There's actually an airspace defined for it. It's, yeah. airspace, okay. it's class G. I mean, it's anything below yeah. 1,200 feet. Is available. Governed by the yeah. feds. Yeah. So this booth, this crazy, like, <laughs> I wanted to go back because I was like, yes. oh, yeah, because there's a TV screen off to the side. And on this TV screen, it's personal, tri like, okay, so you can, what, what do they call it? Okay, I forever they call it. But basically, if we're all walking through a crowd, it can follow you. Oh, what? Just you. you. So it's like, oh, it's almost like the facial, personal rec stalker. A facial yeah. recognition oh, on, a drone, on a drone in a crowd. Yeah. Right? So they can fly over a crowd and be like, oh, there's Jaime. Yeah. I totally need that. <laughs> yeah. I've always yeah. wanted a drone, so why not? I need to go to that. Let's do that. Oh. I need to go to like, that. Like, is it only That's facial creepy. recognition or is it like Pers body, per body it's recognition? Yeah, yeah, it's person. Oh. So on, on, I, got, I saw someone getting a demo and I was like, oh, my God, I try to figure out how to get that. Because then he like tapped on the, the person, and then this like this guy like was like ducking behind other people to and like show was, it. Yeah. And the drone was following. No, him. no, the the image was following him. Okay. Right. So it was it was it was a demonstration of, of the software. Of the software. Oh, yeah. Of so the, the software camera. That, wow. that because was like available on the drone. DJI has the tracking, and you like yeah, you draw a little yeah. square, but it loses you all the time. Dude, yeah. and, and listen. Speaking of DJI, I mean, I I was at their booth. I, two things. Well, three. I mean, <laughs> what is that huge drone that they have? It's it looks like a frickin' airplane. I mean, oh, that big so yeah, cinema got, drone, probably. Cinema drone. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah they, they, they have like the, the, the commercial camera. drone. Yeah, like, okay. Okay. That, that was one. Number two. <laughs> Marquez tell drone. me, tell me that it's true that their new DJI Osmo is just costing one hundred and twenty-five bucks. So the DJI Osmo, the the hand stabilizer yeah. for smartphones, yeah. is yeah. the new one is one twenty-nine. Dude, yes. Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't know. Much? Three hundred dollars, yeah. and I was like, no. Yeah, I don't and, know. And three yeah. people told me yesterday that that was the price tag. I doubt that. Or I'd have to double check. No, it could be the old one that got discounted. To Which would be great. Would be I mean, the Osmo, back. the old, the old one is good enough. I mean, Osmo's pretty but, good. I mean, but I'm getting a little annoyed. At it. it doesn't oh my, age well. Oh my god! Well, and it doesn't work with large devices. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It, it, it does. It just works. It just works. That's why they got the new one. But you love the Ronin. Oh my god! You guys saw the Ronin? No, I didn't see it. What's the Ronin? It's just for a full blown camera. It's yeah, a gimbal. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. gimbal for yeah. a full-blown camera, and they've got two. One for, like, mirrorless cameras, one for DSLRs. Yeah. But, and it's even got feet and everything for you to set it up. It, so it becomes a monopod if you wanted to. It becomes... Every, it's, I'm like, the the ultimate, ultimate, I'm like, the ultimate that, vlogger this, tool. Indeed. This is going to be, life. what, 1200 bucks or what is this thing Hashtag cost? worth it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Are you making $100,000 vlogging? That's I mean, they're not the first on the market for with with a stabilizer like that with for a DSLR. There's yeah. a couple other Chinese yeah. brands that yeah. do it, yeah. but yeah. The, DJI does it better than everybody yeah. else. They're so. more unique than unique. Yeah. Well, until it forgets what zero is, and all of a sudden all your clips and are and breaks your arm. Yeah, it just yeah. snaps yeah. Yeah. your arm. Like, wait a second, my head's well, crooked. Well, but wait a second, it never knows where, where zero is from the moment you unbox it anyway. So, so it's true. like, oh, well, yeah. fair. So you know? Oh, it, was, it was good for the first couple <laughs> shots. <laughs> anyway. I, I like mine. I, I use it every so often. Yeah. And Mine is, has been is losing. Is the Sparks that you lost the tiny one? The DJI, yeah, yeah it's the oh, smallest the one. Or the middle they one that they did. The tiny Not one. the Mavic, no, but the, 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 yeah, the, the, small. the, the, the Sparks. That's, yeah. you, you that's very my, sad. Uh, Mr. Sparks. Uh, okay. Did you buy it? Cool. It, well, um, it was a review actually, unit that ran away. It was uh, D-Brand's <laughs> review unit. <laughs> 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 it's good Thanks, thing I shot it first. Brought to you by D-Brand. Sorry. No, not brought. Left. Yeah, Brought to Mr. Mobile by D-Brand. Lost by Mr. Mobile. Dispatched by Mr. Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that it just fucked off. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be to be fair, I was I was flying very poorly. Uh, 
You're like in the city too, right? I, it, I was it, it, yeah, flying like a total idiot. I don't do that anymore. I fly responsibly now, and what do you know? I haven't yeah, lost you it. Go out to like the sea. Hashtag fly responsibly. <laughs> I've had a couple close not close calls. Like I'm flying it, and I'm like returned to home, lost signal. I'm like, yeah, it's like two miles away. Oh god! Like it was within line. No, it was not within line of sight. I was gonna say, <laughs> you gotta yeah. keep that in line of sight. Yeah. And it was like sunset, getting dark, and I'm like. Uh, I'm in a small town, and but I, I was trying to get like this football field in the high school. It was like beautiful sunset, and like return home. Crap! Where, where, where like thirty it? seconds of like blank screen. I'm like, yeah. what? The oh fuck? no! Yep. Oh, and that's... then it comes back. I'm like, oh. dude. No, to be honest, that is the thing. My thing with DJI, like they make incredible hardware. Those drones are m- m- engineering perfection. Work. Their app is. It's crashed on me. Say it. Like, so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. It's hot garbage. Yeah. Say Garbage. I mean, it, it, it crashes on me regularly. And yeah. Thankfully, the Spark is like yeah. is actual is actually smart enough to just hover there and wait for me to restart the app. Yeah. But boy. But still, you're like, what are you gonna do up there, huh? Yeah. Just, like, just, 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 just stay there, buddy. Stay there. The funny thing is, like, the app will fail, but if you're recording video, it's still recording video, yeah. and so it's recording you frantically trying to fix oh, yeah. it. <laughs> so it fails gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good blooper shot. Yeah. 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 You're like, oh my god. At least you don't have to worry about I mean, being able to portray how bad it is. I mean, if you, you have an audio track, you're like, so we're the camera. Jeep, Jeep, S of a B. This is for Ma. This is for Ma. The surprising thing, it's failed more on my Pixel, the app, really? than yeah. on a Samsung, an HTC. See, it crashes on my Note 8, it crashes yeah. on the Pixel, it crashes on everything. I ha- it, for uh, me, yeah. it's only I crashed on so my Pixel. I feel so out of class right now. I've never used a drone. Yeah, I guess it's, it's just hilarious when yesterday the guy was like, but do you have any experience flying drones? And I'm like, no, I've flown airplanes. Does that help? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know the concepts. You know the concepts. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, let's see what else we got here on this list. Um, I want to add something really quickly. I got to, went to the uh, FLIR booth, you know, the yeah. thermal imaging uh-huh. folks. Yeah. And I saw some cool stuff there that's like prototypey. They had a pair of glasses, like for in, uh, clearly for like industrial or, you know, work, like workman type glasses, uh, safety glasses. And they had like a thing that looked like Google Glass on it, made by some company whose name I completely forgot. But it basically had a FLIR thermal camera on it, and it did the Google Glass thing of showing you the thermal image, oh, superimposed, cool. or whatever you pointed at. And it's really small, and I managed to get, if you go on my Twitter feed right now, you'll see, I managed to take a photo of from inside the lens, like, really? and it looks really cool. great, with a Pixel, of course, which is the I'm best phone ever made <laughs> yeah. in the entire planet of <laughs> smartphones with cameras. We have um, to and, and, to and, by Google. And I just want to say, and then even when they showed with a... They showed a Panasonic Toughbook tablet, a tough pad, I guess it's called, a small one, like iPad mini size, yeah. uh, Android, uh, not Android, Windows 10, and it had a built-in FLIR imaging, and it was g- glorious. Like rugged, droppable, water-resistant, step on it, break it, doesn't break. So kind of for the FLIR. workforce construction site. Yeah, and it had like a barcode scanner, it had like a stereo camera on the back, it had like... I was just like in nerd heaven. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the most extreme form. Just go to my we have Twitter to send it to Adam Dowd. Yeah. yeah. We that's, have to send uh, it to Adam Dowd to prove it. Yeah, prove. let's do oh, it. You we'll gift it to him. You did get a good shot. It's not bad, right? Yeah, you Look at how Dan. focused it is and everything. Yeah. I would have had to put The first Twitter time I, I ever saw Fleur was maybe like eight or nine years ago. And it was at a CTIA. And I was just like hanging out with the guys. And they had the camera pointed out at the crowd. And then this older woman farted <laughs> <laughs> and you could see it and you could see it oh. Oh. and we were standing there and we all how, couldn't believe it how did, how did that look <laughs> <laughs> it's like a puff of air directly from her rear. For a review, wow. someone should like do that, but also yes. like pee their pants and, <laughs> and, and you can see. <laughs> bet, you, bet you never That's thought this dedicated. is the way the podcast would go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fine. I'm in. Let's go. You got the right uh, no, crowd. but I think it's interesting because you know, uh, you know, what kind of makes you wonder: Should I fart in public? Because there's probably some security camera with FLIR, and they're laughing at me. Those security yeah. guards with their donuts. It's a FLIR enabled drone that follows you around. <laughs> the FLIR people are farting behind the camera. So. <laughs> oh, oh boy. 
Um, Gosh, speaking of other things that were cool, uh, Michael, do you want to talk? I think you were the one who wanted to talk about this. The, uh, <laughs> the, the only uh, one. The Planet Gemini PDA. You it did was, a video on yeah, this. I uh, go to uh, Mr. Mobile's there. YouTube channel. Check it out. Yeah. I was just there. So what uh, do you think? So what's interesting about this thing is that it's not a smartphone replacement, even though it could be, but they're very yeah. clearly not marketing as one. Like It is much more like a laptop that stumbled its way into a shrinking machine. Well, right? You it's were a friend of, a, of the tiny, Clie. Right, but it, it's not like the Clie in that like, it is literally a Sony Tablet P like eyeglass-shaped thing that splits along the uh, longitudinal axis. You open it up, and then there's this keyboard inside that's not a BlackBerry keyboard. It's not a MacBook keyboard. It's like... It's a like a 1998 ch- IBM chiclet keyboard. Chick-lit, yeah. Chick-lit, yeah. 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 And it's not ugly. Like, I'm saying it like it's ugly. Or it's not. It's really pretty. It photographs well. It's mushy. And then you lay your fingers <laughs> on it. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Why, am, why is the space bar not like... Why, why do I have to mash these keys? Yeah, you got to... Directional force. So I'm, I was like, and, okay, at CES, we're looking at pre-production stuff. Right? That's so right. I'm like, hey, dude... Um, you, sir, rather. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Older gentleman, uh, sir. W- how close is this to production? He was basically like, these are from Final. the production set. And I was like, oh no. Because I love the idea of a modern day PDA. I don't think a lot of people would buy them. I think it would skew toward an older demo. But there isn't probably a market for it. But you've got to nail that keyboard. And I really, really hope the f- that he was wrong. And then the ones we were using. If that's the fine. selling point, it has to be gotta, perfect. You've got to be you gotta right it. on. Yeah. Yeah. But they have what? They have a Wi Fi version, they have a 4G version. Mm-hmm. The screen is really nice. Dual it runs Linux. Android. Dual Boots and Linux. Dual Boots right. And Linux. Um, Ooh. It's not that yeah. expensive. It's two ninety nine for the Wi Fi, yeah. three ninety nine for the 4G. Um, and, and you can get a camera. You pay 50 bucks, put a camera on it. So then it'll so, replace. Oh, and you make it, we can make voice calls. And because of you, I went and spent. 45 minutes because of you playing with it yeah so I went there I think that you can get the keyboard if you try I, I question your dedication really yes so you you came minutes. away from it and you were like you could write after like, 45 what? minutes of like people coming and talking to me at the table and being like don't take it back I'm not done uh-huh. right so yeah. like, <laughs> she's like writing her review on it already <laughs> writing her review on it all these people came up and kept on chatting, and I'm like, don't take it away. I still haven't finished filming. Right. And so, like, by the end of it, I, I still couldn't figure out how to open the stupid music video. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was get, I, like, the, the space bar is the hardest, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But the keys, once you kind of get that, so it, it took me maybe, like... I'd say like five or six hundred words. Like I, it's, it wow. was, it you wasn't, were yeah. Dedicated. No, yeah. yeah. Cause like people she wrote her hands me, on. Wrote my hands yeah. on yeah. there. Right there and shot like, it. like people came and chatted and I, and I just kept on practicing. See, that's, right. that's yeah. really cool because that's what, I mean, the people who have ordered this, and by the way, it's like one of the most popular Indiegogo projects of 2017. Wow. It's yeah. like, it's 230% funded. That's already. the kind of effort they would put in. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They buy it and then they're like, well, all right, now I'm going to write everything on this for, for two now? days until I'm used so to this keyboard. What is it running Android? Yeah, it runs Android and then you yeah. And it's basically Linux. like the you know, there's another very successful crowdfunding um, project. Is that Windows 10 super GPD tiny? Thing. Yeah. yeah. So is it like that, but cheaper and jankier, or is it as good? No, I, no, I, I think, think the hardware nice. feels I think really it's nicer. Feels yeah. good. Nicer, yeah. It's nicer. Yeah. Nicer. I haven't Whoa. played with the GPU one. Um, Me neither. But yeah, I, I, I don't imagine want it's to, nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Just a flat feeling. Thought, yeah. So like Here's the, the thing, keyboard like, works really well when you set it down yeah. on a table. It real it's it's top heavy if yeah. you're holding it in your hands and yeah. you're trying to do it with your thumb. So oh, yeah. just to yeah. keep that in mind, like it's right. yeah. you have to put it down and use but it as a laptop. It's meant to be a little laptop. Yeah, yeah. but and if you're in the, the bus the, and yeah. you're yeah. pulling right. it out, yeah. and so it's like the, the original Windows C PDA is pretty yeah. much of the kind. Yeah, 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 kind of. Right. So do you know how I figured out how to type on it? When the guy was showing me how to type on it, I'm like, oh, he types like a grandpa. Two fingers. Two fingers. Two fingers, two fingers right maybe, maybe, maybe four. Uh-huh. You remember yeah. typing right. two to right there. And you're yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. So uh-huh. I, I was like, oh. Yeah. So he's kind of like yeah. tapping with his fingers, maybe occasionally the thumb. Yeah. Because right? so there's like, not enough room for all Because there's not enough fingers. room. Yeah. But then like when I saw him like peck away at the keyboard, I was like, oh, it'd be like my grandpa typing. And then I like. That's how my dad. Yeah. I completely altered my style. Okay. Right. And then I was like, oh, this, this works it's not so and bad. I can, hear, I, can't do that. I can hear yeah. the normal people being like, but why am I going to go to that effort, right? Why not buy like a $400 laptop like we were talking about before and just do that? But here's my thing. I'm always on a plane. I'm always on a train. 
And every single time the guy in front of you reclines a seat, and that's and fine. You had no room. But you have no room for a big yeah. laptop. Economy this thing plus would be friend. perfect. Don't, don't you take the cafe car? <laughs> no, but yet, for me, no. economy plus I just want car. a landscape slider back. Uh, like, like, no, I, 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 I love you. Want you know, a e- even, no, even no, like I the, want, I want, the, I want the G three, oh, like, like the, the G two HTCs. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I, don't, I listen, love uh, them. I even love them. That, no. the, what was that? Slap the, the, yeah. the kick. Kick. No, the side kick. The side kick. The side kick. So that was cool. Yeah, it was cool. But even when those keyboards existed, I never used them. Yeah, because your thumbs have to travel. It was too much travel. I, I loved it. I loved it. I could BlackBerry key wand. No, I, I. I, never I, always wondered, I always wondered. So I always wondered why nobody came up with like something where it was a slider, but then you don't want such a you know ample keyboard, and so just put a D pad on the left and something on the right, and a numeric keyboard or something. Yeah. Something. <laughs> a numeric, something a no, 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 it's just G nine big- in the most obnoxious <laughs> form. My biggest problem with using phones for gaming is not having keys to play with. Word. Yes. So if somebody would come up with a slide out keyboard that in the middle would be the QWERTY and then on the sides it would have like a control oh, like yeah. a, a like a D-pad that could be used for gaming and then the other one buttons. There was a I, Sony I one that. with Windows Mobile back in the day that was built by HTC that had that. Oh, no, nice. no, it was an Android one. I have it, the Xperia Play. I have a, it was shitty. We have a que- <laughs> <laughs> I have a question that's not on the list, probably. Has anybody seen yeah. the, since we're talking about keyboards, has anybody seen the Moto Mod with the QWERTY keyboard? No, I didn't no. get there. Oh. I, I did. I have to give a disclaimer. It was one of my clients when they were working on this. So, yeah, and not anymore. You know, yeah. Not anymore, but it's fine. I'm just saying, like, okay. I just need to be in a state sure. that. If we talk about it, it was one of my clients. I helped them with a lot of their you know, strategy around this product okay. because I kind of know what you guys would all want, right? right? So, yeah. uh, and, and then Sean's going to be here to and, provide and, a safe harbor statement. And, and then, yeah, so so Sean, uh, Sean Hollister of CNET, uh, you oh, know, was kind of like, like the guy that I knew would be, the, no. would be really into it. And, 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 you know, the only thing I couldn't get them to do, at least on this first gen, is the staggered keys, which I think really need to happen. Oh, right. But They're this like... got the backlight, and it's also a little thicker than we wanted. But I think they had so many issues getting the Motomod connector, the, the pins, you know, like, and everything yes. to, to fit in the right space. So it's a little bulkier than I expected it to be and not staggered, but I think they're working on it. Also, if you played with them, these are fourth gen prototypes. They're already on fifth gen. So I don't know why wow. they didn't bring those, but... Uh, anyway, it's, it's a generation time, cool. Yeah. I don't remember the price, but it's, yeah. it's it was crowdfunded. It was like two, like two nine nine or something. Like no, yeah. it's not that. It's, probably, much. it's, it's just a like keyboard. I was thinking one. I was thinking nine nine. So did, um, did you yeah. like it, Mister Mobile? I didn't play with. It. I haven't yeah. seen. It. I went up to go try and do it. And it's at the Lenovo. Uh, yeah, I know. Booth, I think. I know exactly where it is. Well, speaking of keyboards, speaking of which, where can I find the Gemini thing? Oh, that was at Eureka Park. Oh, it's like they're, park? Yeah, they're okay. in yeah. Sands, yeah. yeah. I can give you the booth number. Sweet. Yeah. Um, but, oh, that was the thing, though. You guys talked about backlights, and the Gemini doesn't have a backlight. No. Wah, wah, wah. Do not understand that decision. They, they said they wanted want. higher quality keycaps. I'm like, cool, but I want to type in the dark. Though. I want Jaime to talk about his most loved keyboard of oh. CES, and it's, they're not even at CES, right? We, we talked about it with them today, right? Oh, the EV. Yep. Oh, so, so they so they want us to do a, a review on the product. They sent one for, and Adam Lane did the did our text review. But they they would like a video, and I you know I was like, okay, sure. I love the surface form factor, but I got the chance to see it today for the first time, and I was like, wait a second. So you're telling me that you pretty much did everything that the surface should be? Yeah. Really? You literally created a computer that is absolutely everything that the Surface should have always been. And then you also came up with a keyboard that looks almost identical to it. Oh, and you can also unsnap it and use it wirelessly. It also has that functionality. Oh, that's pretty cool. But it's got all the ports that we wanted. It's got all the specs that we wanted. There, There are no fans. There's a Core i7 variant with 16 gigs of RAM. Two USB ports out of which one of them is Thunderbolt 3. Two USB A ports, oh, a pen. Pen. I'm like, I just wanted to say that the keyboard is also backlit and it also works when and, it's and wireless. It cha- and, so it changes, and it changes colors. I'm and waiting for colors. the other shoe to drop. What's wrong with it? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. How much Price. is it? Nothing. Two thousand. I don't know. It's fifteen hundred. No, it's, it's really affordable. No, it's, no. Wait a second. The, the full spec is base, like base, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So base level is ninety nine 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 fifty nine nine fifty nine. If, if and we're talking about an M3 with everything, but they're thinking about ditching the M3 because yeah. it's pointless. Yeah, the mean, price tag, the yeah. price tag between that and the i5 is just insignificant, and they're not doing fans anyways. And so you know, 
you look at their whole profile. It's just the product. Look. I, I just wish the keyboard came in like red or blue or something like that. But in absolutely everything else, I'm like, you realize that this is, you know, daily driver potential for me. Mm-hmm. I need a surface for work. I yeah. actually rely on pen input for my scripts. And I, but the difference is, I could actually edit a video on this thing. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's powerful enough. It, it's, yeah. it's a 7.5 watt uh, TPU, but it does perform like a. I, I was part. very impressed. Yeah, max spec i7, uh, which is the dual core, uh, but it, it one it's terabyte. 16 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs expandable storage, 1895, 512 gigabytes. 512 gigabytes solid state drive. That's me well, they were all numbers. Yes, Dude. all the numbers. Resolution <laughs> of display. Oh, wait 20, a second. 2080, 1920. <laughs> so, nice. it's, so it's an Ixo, sharp Ixo display, just like a, on a Razer. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. This That's is gorgeous. Closer, I bought one myself, i5, uh, but none, not related to Pocket Dan. Just to be clear. Oh, this, and it's, this and is it's, not here at the show, right? It's it's in the Intel booth. It's in oh, the, okay. Like, it's in the in Intel booth because okay. so they had an uh, they had a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, raised raised nearly three million bucks, yeah. and you talk to these guys, and these guys are very passionate people. You know, they're young. Uh, they actually they could aren't tell they, you they, they finish. Finland, yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're from Finland. Finland. Finland company, and they could pinpoint like absolutely everything that the community asked for in this computer. Yeah, they got a slick website, and how they figured it out, how they same. added the fingerprint scanner to the button, to the power button, just about everything. Oh, and the display has no reflection as well. I'm so like, holy crap! It's a, they it's a launched, magical unicorn. They launched it at, at Computex, and I went to yeah. look for it at the Microsoft booth. It's there. It's there. I walked around. I couldn't find it. Because I'm like, because it looks so much like, oh, a, like surface. a surface. I you you walk right by it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I actually don't have a video. I was like, oh, so man. this is actually a good segue because I, I think um, I want to talk about that Lenovo device, that oh, the uh, Qualcomm based Windows 10, uh, the Mix M I I X 630 from Lenovo. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I was in Hawaii with a bunch of you yeah. uh, for the reveal, the big, the first two products that were revealed with. Uh, running Windows 10 on Snapdragon 835, and I, be- I assume that Lenovo is 835 still, not yeah. 45 yeah. yet. Um, and of course, we saw then an Asus uh, laptop form factor, uh, and we saw an HP detachable floppy keyboard, is what I like to call them, form factor. <laughs> I love um, the HP. And because uh, to me, the Surface Book is also a detachable, but it's done right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and then, of course, this, this Lenovo is also a floppy keyboard detachable tablet. And so a couple of things, you know, at the time I had expressed my concern saying like, you know, it's a good start and I understand that we're actually waiting for probably Computex and the Snapdragon 845 versions and Asus to really jump in and give us a ZenBook style device. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's interesting to me is that when I looked around at how Lenovo was positioning this device, it's very obvious to me that they're afraid of pissing off Intel and the normal laptop, that these things are going to be tablet derivatives and it's pissing me off because all I'm asking for, I have a MacBook on the table here recording. You guys all know what it looks like. You guys all seen a Zen book, the super slick, super Mm -hmm. thin. I want a laptop, not a tablet detachable or otherwise convertible. I want a laptop running Windows 10. It doesn't have to have a touch screen, but I want it with Snapdragon 845 LTE, huge battery and super thin and light, even even thinner and lighter than the Asus ZenBook. Agreed. Give me that. And what, and I don't think we're going to get that because they're going to say, well, it has to have a touch screen because, you know, because it's Snapdragon. Why would we throw away this touch screen? Because everything is, uh, I'm like, uh. I'm well, but here's the, the, here's the thing, though. Like, we've been asking for that, those who like Chromebooks, we've been asking for that for Chromebooks as well because you can get a nice Chromebook. True. But it's super expensive. Right. And so I think... The, the manufacturers are afraid of pissing off Microsoft by creating an awesome, you know, $300 Chromebook that looks incredible. When they can do that for Windows, there mm. are devices for it. So they can do it. It's, yeah, as you said, they're again, afraid to, to piss me, actually, off I'm Intel. actually willing to pay $1,500. This was a $1,799 fully loaded MacBook when I bought it two years ago. Mm. I don't care. It's a work thing. I don't care. I'll pay for it. So for me, it's not the price so much. It's just I want the super light, super thin, great battery life LT. And Snapdragon brings that to me in Windows 10. And Windows 10 is the only OS that's full-fledged enough for me to actually work on. Yeah. But And here's the thing, Miriam. I, I don't know. At least my opinion is... Uh, for example, things that they were showing off, like 20 hours of battery life. I'm not awake for 20 hours unless I'm playing. Uh-huh. 
So I, I, it's I, nice I, for flights. I like the, yeah for a flight to China that's great. But it's nice for CES. Yes, you, just, you don't know when you're going to plug in. So next. I like yeah. the concept, but I was like, okay, I would like the option where there is your regular form factor, but then I would love for somebody to experiment with this like really thin, crazy computer that will weigh one pound and fit anywhere in my bag. Exactly. And uh, fine, just give me ten hours of battery because you can't fit a larger battery in that. I don't care. I just I want it to be really thin, thin and light. light. You know, the other thing I'd be willing to do if it wasn't a laptop is a Lenovo Yoga style conver- convertible. Yeah, because uh, I, oh, I think yeah. the hinge yeah. is the hinge design is awesome. Yes, and yeah. and I don't I probably wouldn't use that stuff every now idea. and then. Or like the Pixel Book. The Pixel Book is probably the yeah. best laptop yeah. design of all time. I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> but really I think good. it really is. It's so really thin, it's so light, it runs really long on battery, it's That's really silicone. fast. The only thing that I wish <laughs> I had is a more less bezel. It has less too much bezel. bezel. Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing: the Yoga Book last year, remember? that yoga book yeah, the yeah. Thing, the so imagine one. you mm-hmm. put a real keyboard and trackpad on that instead mm-hmm. yeah. and you keep it that thin and light and you give me Windows 10 bezel-less and you put like a fingerprint reader and now it's got 15 hour battery life that's with LTE want. that's what I would want yeah. I hallelujah that's what I would like, want it's tiny you throw it in your bag you're done you yeah. can work anywhere you can edit video anywhere here's my well, thing like I mean, th- that would be a truly aspirational like category defining product and none of these manufacturers seem to want to create that. I was asking at uh, Lenovo, the same thing I asked both, uh, what, Asus and HP. I was like, why are you using the same old brands? Why does every manufacturer seem to want to hide these behind, like, I don't, not that I'm saying Mix 630 is not memorable. <laughs> oh, wait, sure I am. <laughs> in, in a negative way, memorable? Yes. Yeah, well, he, like, and just, actually, like, to, to, just sounded like a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yes, like, of course. Like, sure. Uh, Lenovo, to its credit, was the only one to actually answer me, and their answer was hilarious. It was like, well, we haven't really, we haven't done, it's, you know, the 630, we haven't done it even numbered six before. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I was like, you guys are my favorite. So... Thank you. That's the best answer I'm going to get. Yeah. No, but I mean, I think it'll come. It's just, it's an unproven category yes. as of right now. So they're, I think they're really, they're just taking their pinky toe and stepping in and like, we're not trying to make anybody mad, and we're not trying to make something incredible. If people buy this, we'll make a second one. Right. But is it is it because, I question this sometimes, we're all content producers with a very specific need yeah. for market The, for market the average prices. consumer does not do what we do. They surf, so, the, they like, surf Facebook. Can, so how can we criticize them for not building us our dream machine? <laughs> there's like, like there's probably what like what five thousand people who do this job because we're so <laughs> little, you know. But we're so influential, it's so Nicole. True. We're so influential. <laughs> you know, Microsoft has been dealing with that. I mean, they've been wanting. I mean, there's a program where they reached out to us particularly because they actually want to start changing the thing where they notice press events and all they see are Apple logos being lit during the press events by all the press. That's all we use. And why? Because these computers actually address some of the true needs of creators regardless if we're such a small niche. Yeah, touch bar. That's my number one. Oh my God. Can we please have a MacBook without a touch bar that's more powerful? That's all I want. Can we please have a 2012 MacBook? Can we just have the retro <laughs> edition? Excuse what I retro edition oh, new. I, I'm willing to. I'm willing to go all USB C. And speaking of all USB C, haha, the segue has been made. I want to the touch bar because the only okay, thing that's you good rant for, about the touch bar some more. The only go thing that's it. good for is going back and forth, scrubbing between it's Instagram, it's st- it's Instagram Instagram videos. It's, it's not, not good. good. Instagram no. videos. Why are you watching Instagram videos on the your computer? It's <laughs> horrible. But that's, that's what your phone thing. is for. That's the only thing it's for. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I think for me the biggest, I, I mean, my, my MacBook is the original, not the slightly flashed or revised version, and it's it's I struggle. I mean, five more than five tabs, I can't really use it, mm. and I do basic video editing on it. Thank God, it's not that bad on iMovie, especially the new version of iMovie is really optimized. It's for really machines. optimized. It's incredible. I render faster with this when then with, with my Elgato stick when I used to have an Elgato stick, yeah. Yeah. which is incredible. And yet, it's less powerful than when I use an Elgato stick on the old version of iMovie on my MacBook Air, which was a faster computer. Anyway, um, I want a MacBook Air. Th- uh, MacBook 13, like MacBook Pro 13, I want the high-end version without the touch bar and the fingerprint reader, though. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But I'm, we'll know that's going to go in. They're going to put Face ID and all the I Macs, just, right? I, I so, just, of course, sure. right? I just, I want, 
Can somebody please, you know, Apple, it's about time for a quad-core 13-inch MacBook Pro. Yeah. Please. Because I've, I've, been, I've been always wanting to move back to 13 inches. I hate carrying that mm-hmm. behemoth it's a monster. Of, of, yeah. of the 15-inch computer, and I can't because I need quad-core performance for the amount of video that I do. Yeah. It's just night and day when you hit that render button. It's like, shoot, I, I can't, you know? So I want to talk about the uh, the XPS 13 real quick. All USB C all the time. What do you guys think? I think it was just hot because of the white and gold it was gold. Somehow that combo really works. And I'm really fascinated by the the fiber carbon. It's not carbon fiber. It's glass, glass fiber, fiber weave that they custom designed that where the white is embedded in it so it doesn't get dirty and they have a nano coating on top of that so it doesn't stain. It, I, I just it, thought it was really cool. Is it just as soft as the previous XPS 13? Apparently. No. Uh, I love that feel. It's, no, the feel is a little bit different. It's, oh. It has a different feel than the... Than the previous Than 13? the previous one, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit smoother. Huh. Oh, it's smoother? Yeah. It's already so, pretty smooth. It well, it's nice. smoother as in, like, glossier. Oh, okay. A glossier oh, finish. I don't know. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it, uh, it's not the soft touch feel. I didn't feel get to that. touch it, so I don't know. So, the um, verdict is out. You guys, did, did nobody played with it? I did not. I, did I not. mean, I to touched me, it for a minute. It's yeah. it's it's the same. We got the new color option with the white. Mm-hmm. Um, my complaint is the camera's still at the bottom. Oh your nose. god! Oh, that's the worst part. Yeah. Oh yeah. my and, god! And so, sure. like, you redesigned the thing. You're calling it new, and then you stick the. They put the camera in the middle now, at least, but it's what still do at you the mean? bottom. It's still it's still, it's bad. still at the bottom. It's, it's like, bad. I mean, it's like so I need a manicure every time I want to make like a fucking you know, <laughs> video call. Hey, like, can you check my nose? Like, you got something up there? <laughs> yeah. But like the thing is, um, even if there's these major things wrong with it, it's still going to be my number one recommendation for yeah. laptop for anyone to well, buy. Yeah, and I own it now. I'm not overly thing. excited about it. It's just the price point for the design, for the durability. You can't yeah, the beat design it. is you, awesome. You, you just can't beat it. Yeah. Like I've unfortunately stopped recommending Lenovo's because after one year, everyone I know, they just die. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. So like like I start to look at like when you recommend something and you're not going to recommend an Apple, mm-hmm. you have to you go you, with the XPS look. Yeah, because yep. you, you need to look your friend in the eye in two and years. That is, <laughs> that, 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 that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. I think it is one of the most well-sorted Windows 10 PCs you can buy. Yep. Uh, because you have to look at all the angles, not just the good design, but it has to be durable. Yeah. It has to be, you know, yeah. grow potentially with you for a couple of years or more, you know. I, I keep my Macs for a long time, most of them five years or so. And, yeah. and you know, this one probably not because it's a little underpowered, but uh, I just bought a brand new iMac uh, for the holidays. Uh, I was like, oh, tax deductions for 2017 for my business. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I mean, the reality is I haven't set it up yet, but I can't wait because I'm, I'm running on an old Mac Mini and it's painful. Ooh, um, yeah. But he, let's talk about one. Before I, I let you outro each of you very briefly because we really need to get out of here by in the next four minutes. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you, uh, I just mentioned really quickly, Alcatel had some phones, we're going to see more at Mobile Congress. We have collectively here decided that we have no comment. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Okay, good. And now, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> they can't say I haven't talked about the <laughs> Alcatel phones. Okay. Yeah. Nic- Nicole, <laughs> tell us where people can find you online. You can go to mobilegeeks.com or mobilegeeks.de and Twitter underscore, no, Nicole underscore Scooter. Wonderful. Jules? Uh, I am at Point Jules. Uh, Also on Instagram where I just made photos. Uh, Juice Farcicles. Farcicle uh, is like obscenely weird, but whatever. (laughs) And then there's an S at the end. And then, of, of course, Pocket Now. Of course. Michael? Yeah, I'm at the Mr. Mobile pretty much everywhere. T H E M R M O B I L E, especially Instagram, where my producer Jules is kicking out pretty awesome Not stuff. Not the same Jules, FYI. Though. My Just, producer Justice. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Just I was gonna my say, Jules? Yes, I'm gonna you know. say your producer Jules. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was uh, a very awkward Throwback. Moment. Sorry, everybody. Throwback. It's a really tiring show. Nick. Nick, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Nick M. Gray, uh, or YouTube.com slash High Tech Traveler. Mm-hmm. Really cool videos you've been doing that. U11 Plus, you, you, you own the U11 I Plus I killed space. the U11 Plus. It was Thanks awesome. to Nicole here, who <laughs> sent it to me from Taiwan. Wow, look at yeah. that. Personal delivery Don't service. Don't we collaborate? Yeah. People yeah. don't believe it. They think we're like evil enemies. We hate each other. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we're, uh, Jaime, where them. can people find you? Okay, uh, YouTube.com slash Pocket Now, and then uh, Jaime underscore Rivera on Twitter, Jaime Rivera on Instagram. Hashtag PM Weekly, too. 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> so uh, you guys know where to find me. I'm at TNKGRL on Twitter, Tank Girl without the vowels. Uh, my YouTube channel is just Miriam Joar, my full name with a Y, youtube.com slash Miriam Joar. And of course, please subscribe to the podcast, mobiletechpodcast.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Pocket Casts, and uh, the RSS feed link is at that URL if you go to it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was enjoyable. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Any Thank final you. words? Thank you. Yeah, no, this was great. All right. Until next year. We did it. Yay. Clap, clap, clap. All right. Let's wrap it up. Sure. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap on the show. Once again, our gratitude to Miriam Jor and the Mobile Tech Podcast for the facilities and the conversation. Head on over to worldpodcasts.com. We think you should give the show a well-earned subscription. To be sure, Pocket Now is on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, and on YouTube, of course. We have a site, pocketnow.com, and a smash site, too. That's es.pocketnow.com. Shows like this cannot continue without the support of listeners like you, so if you think we did a good job with this episode, share it wherever you can with your friends, and even if you think we did a bad job, rate and, more importantly, review the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever else you found us. Tell us what you think about any topic in mobile technology through the hashtag PNWeekly on Twitter or through email. That's podcast at pocketnow.com. We go through letters on the last week of every month and would love to tackle your questions. It's one of the things that has kept us running this show every week for the past six years. On behalf of the team, I'm Jules Wong. We thank you for listening. And there's more mobile tech talk from Pocket Now coming next week. Yeah, what, what happens is we end up podcasting. Shoes are off. Podcasts are too. Shoes are hey. off. Oh my gosh. Alright, this is the video, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> That's the best Everyone. idea I've ever heard. <laughs> First thing I did. Oh. So that means I get to chop a new, new Nikola oh. socks. Okay.